Okay, here we're going to look at uh, filtering a unit step, but this time we're going to use a second order filter. So let's go to uh, Simulink, bring up the browser there, and then we'll do a new model. Put that model down here in the lower right hand corner. And let's see, let's go to sources and get our unit step there. And our usual stuff, sinks, let's get our scope. Uh, commonly used blocks, let's get our mux. Set that guy up there, we'll connect that, we'll connect this guy to here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to continuous and I'm going to get a transfer function. But now I'm going to make it a second order transfer function. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to make this guy maybe, uh, there you go, 1, 2, 1 in the denominator, in which case I have s squared plus 2s plus 1. So that guy really, if you look at the roots, that's like s plus 1 quantity squared. So the two poles, so here what we've got is, uh, let's see, poles are equal to negative 1 comma negative 1, and then what's zeta equal to here? Well, let's see, if omega sub n is equal to 1, then 2 zeta uh, is equal to 2, so zeta is equal to 1 right here, yeah. All right, so let's uh, connect this guy up and see what happens when we run this. We're going to run a step through this guy. It is the low pass filter and zeta is equal to 1 and I've got two poles. They're real and they are equal. And there you go. Let's uh, maximize this guy. Get a little bit, not maximize it, but give it a little bit more room to see what's happening. And yeah, there you go. It kind of looks like the first order one. Here's your unit step and then uh, the signal starts to, you know, capacitor starts to charge up and then all of a sudden there's the voltage across the um, the capacitor, right? Yeah, so um, yeah, there is your um, response to this filter. Well, let's play some games here and see what happens. Let's copy this, control C, control V, paste it, and let's paste it one more time. Okay, so I want to get two more inputs on my mux here. So let's change it from 2 to 4. Now let's increase the size of this guy. Okay, so I'll run this one to that input, this one to that input. I'm going to run the same or unit step into these guys. But in the first case, I had two poles and they were equal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two poles and make them unequal. How about a pole at negative 1 and uh, negative 4? So what would that be? That would be something like, um, oh, that number here would be a 4, and then 1 and 4, I think that would be a 5. So if I do that, I get an S squared plus that. Now, uh, let's just put a 4 up top so that we get 0 dB gain. Okay. So now omega sub n squared is 4, so omega sub n is 2. Uh, 2 zeta times 2 is equal to 4 one fifth. I think zeta, if I, I'm doing my math, right, I'm doing this in my head, so I'm not sure. I think that's probably 1.25. So they're real and unequal. First case is real and equal. Let's do that. Real and equal poles. Right? Now down here, this guy would be a uh, real and unequal poles. Right? And then let's see, let's kind of move that guy over there. Now down here, let's make them complex. If I make these guys, if I make this uh, a one here, then it's definitely going to be complex. And I'll let you solve for the ro roots. So if I come down to here, I can say poles are complex. And then zeta, well, we know it's got to be, what, less than one if they're complex. Yeah, so here you go. We've got some transfer functions, one over s squared plus 2s plus 1. That just factors to s plus 1 quantity squared, so I've got two poles at negative 1. Down here, I've got s plus 1 times s plus 4, which gives you s squared plus 5s plus 4, so I've got a pole at negative 1, negative 4. And then if I change that coefficient to a 1, well, they're going to be complex, and you can figure out. If omega sub n is 1, then 2 zeta is 1, so I think yeah, zeta in this case would be 0.5. Well, let's just run that and see what happens. All right. Look at the response. Okay. Again, you know, we can do this if you like. The, the step is yellow. And then the next one is purple. All right, so okay, that is my um, low-pass filter with equal poles. So notice it's like a little bit lower. It takes a little bit longer to come up to speed, a little bit longer. Now, um, 
the real and unequal poles would be the uh, the light blue. Let's call it blue. Okay. And then the last one is red. There you go. I mean, they're all basically doing the same thing. They're all a low-pass filter. You know, um, the edge here is high frequency. So they're going to all kind of resist that instantaneous change because they're not high-pass filters. They're low-pass. But then as soon as that input stays constant, they're going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a constant. I'm a low-pass. I can, uh, you know, I can allow that to pass through. And, it, and then they all basically go asymptotic to 1.0. But the thing to note here, that red, that complex uh, poles had a little bit of overshoot. Yeah, so let's uh, put a little comment here. A note over shoot of unit step response yeah we didn't have that in the other two yeah so that's pretty slick huh yep there you go and then you can change these uh, parameters and kind of look at your response and so forth and see what's going on all right well i think that's good that was uh filtering a unit step with a second order system and um yeah hey you know what for fun why don't we just put some s's in here yeah let's do that since we're only at about six minutes Let's see if you can figure out what happens. Let's put an S up there. And let's put an S here. And let's see what I'll do. I'll do, um, yeah, I'll make it a 4S. That's fine. And let's put an S right here. And who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just doing this. I'm just getting, getting crazy here. So we put an S in all those guys. Oh, wow, look at that. And once again, you know, it's like the, um, the yellow is the step. Now the purple, notice it starts to follow the step, but it says, wait a minute, I'm a bandpass filter. I can't pass a constant DC, so it attenuates it down to zero. And then the, uh, the blue one, let's see, it says, oh, yeah, sure, I can allow you to pass because, you, you know, you've got some frequencies of that edge. That edge is like an infinite number of frequencies. I'll allow the frequencies that are in my bandpass to pass. And then uh, you're like, whoa, wait a minute, you're constant, and I'm a bandpass filter. I'm not going to let you pass. And then the red says same thing. I'll let some of you guys pass. Oh, wait a minute, you're constant. I'm not going to let you pass, but I'm, I'm a little, I'm complex. I'm, I have issues. <laughs> I'm complex. I'm going to oscillate back and forth before I decide that you can't pass because I have issues. I am complex. And there you go. So you can play games and put an S square and whatever and change the variables and see what's happening. Okay, so I am going to stop there. Thanks for listening. See you next time.